So I've done some videos with some super old equipment, maybe from the 1960s even, and there are microwave frequencies. And a lot of people question, well, how did anybody measure microwave frequencies back in the 1960s, right? There was nothing fast enough. And so this is one of the tools that they had. Um, this is what's known as a crystal detector, and I'll, I'll show you a diagram of what it is. Uh, let's see if I can, can you read that one? Barely. Uh, crystal detector model 8470A negative. We'll talk about what negative means. And uh, it's, this one's made by Hewlett Packard. It has an N connector on this side and a BNC on that side. And it detects microwaves. This one is good up to 18 gigahertz, believe it or not. Um, and so you put the RF in this side, and then you can measure a voltage on this side, and that voltage is proportional to the power of the RF coming in. All right? You can also think of this as an envelope detector, okay? It's going to be like the very last stage of an AM radio where you have the wigglies and you need to turn that into audio. You have a diode and a capacitor uh, to do that, that rectification. And uh, so let me show you a diagram of the circuit that's in here. And that's it. It's a diode and a capacitor, very low capacitance, probably 15, 15 puff or something like that, pretty low. And um, we are going to send RF through this thing. So this has to be a very, very fast diode. Well, back in the old days, they didn't really even have diodes. And so what they used was crystals. And if you have ever played with a crystal radio, you know, from grandpa's, um, there's a piece of rock and a little piece of wire, the whisker, and it makes a point contact. And you can make these point contacts and it makes it into a diode. And so they used these crystals mounted uh, a little more, a little better than just a, a whisker and stuff, but they, they, they made detector diodes just with rocks, okay? And this one actually has a real diode in it, so maybe it's from the uh, late 60s, um, early 70s, not sure. Um, but it has a, uh, a fancier diode in it. I forget what kind of diode, uh, kind of a weird thing you probably wouldn't even find today, but kind of like a zero by shocky, but not exactly. Um, but it's in the data sheet if you want to look it up. Uh, so yeah, and this thing is fairly linear. Um, usually these are specified with some type of linearity over one decade. So usually what these are used for is you're going to set up your spectrum analyzer and you're going to sweep a filter. Now you're not sweeping the entire band, you're just sweeping a small section that's just where the filter is. So it's just a small range of frequencies. And as long as it's not more than two to one a decade or an octave, these are octaves. So some, so many dB per octave is the way these things are specified. And I think this one's like plus or minus point two dB per octave. And so it's fairly flat. And so you can monitor the amount of power outputting your, um, your sweeper. So if your sweeper has a, a dip in it, you could use these to, to, to find that dip and then compensate for it. You could put it in a feedback loop um, and to level the signal, or you can just measure it and then use those numbers to subtract off of your other measurements. So you can you can use this. A lot of times they're used in combination with a uh, uh, with a um, coupler. Okay, so you have your uh, RF source. Okay, your RF generator, and it's going to be going into a filter. Okay, so here's your filter, and here's your uh, spectrum analyzer. Okay, and you're going to be sweeping this thing. You want to make this sure this is flat. So what you do is you put a coupler in here. Okay and you're gonna couple off uh, part of the signal, okay? And that signal follows, maybe it's like 1% of the signal, and then you put that into one of these um, diode detectors. Now you have a voltage 
that's proportional to the amount of power that you're sweeping through this thing. And a lot of times this signal can come into the spectrum analyzer and level it out, or you could run it into the RF generator and level it out. This is, this is usually the way it's used. It's, you're measuring a percentage of the output power, you're feeding that back down into the RF uh, source, and then the source moves its power up and down to flatten it. And so um, this is the, uh, oops, sorry. This is the detector. This is the coupler. Okay. And uh, yeah, so let's, uh, let's hook this one up and I'll show you how we could use it. Okay, I have a RF source. I'm gonna be using my uh, Tiny SA Ultra as my source. All right. So let's turn it on. Um, let's do a preset on that. So everything is fine. We'll do a mode signal generator. Uh, we will set the frequency to let's say one gigahertz. And the output power we will set to minus minus 20, so we have minus 20 dBm uh, at one gigahertz, and we will turn uh, that on. I'll turn it off right now. All right, so while my scope is booting, we're gonna be using a solar scope. Uh, this is the detector. This is gonna be the output of the tiny SA. I need an adapter, so this is an SMA to N, N adapter. We will put that in here. Um, and then we will hook the B and C up to the oscilloscope. And so we can watch the voltages coming out of the, uh, out of the crystal detector. And we are now booted up. All right. And so let's clear this. So we have some voltage. Um, and we're gonna, gonna come in on channel four. So let's watch channel four. There's channel four. All right. And we have nothing right now. Now let me enable the, uh, the tiny SA, tell it to output. And I did and nothing happened. What happened here? How come nothing happened? Uh... All right. So we have a negative voltage. I'm going to turn the tiny SA off and there we go. And so here's zero volts. We're at five millivolts per division. So when I turn it on, it goes down there to minus five millivolts. Okay. And if you remember our circuit here, it's, it's detecting negative peaks. The, when that thing said negative on it, it meant that the diode was in this way around. And so power is more negative. Okay. You get negative volts out of it. Um, so there we go. Um, it's dropped down here and that shows you that you're outputting power. Okay. Now let me turn the modulation on. I'm going to use uh, the capability of this to add modulation. So I'll say modulation. I'll do AM modulation. We're going to be doing a hundred Hertz at 80%. All right. And so let's go back up here. Oh, there we go. It's whacking up and down. So the AM is modulating. And uh, let's go ahead and slow this down because it's uh, 10. Oh, no, it's one, one kilohertz. It's a one kilohertz tone. Let's see if we can, uh, let's see if we can trigger on that. Answer my phone. Spam, of course. Always oh, spam. Okay, here. Let's see here. We want to trigger on channel four. And there we go. Okay, so what's happening here? Um, we are actually AM detecting the signal, right? We have this peak detector and that peak detector has a pretty small capacitor. So it's able to follow that, that one kilohertz modulation. So this is happening at one kilohertz. So uh, we start at nothing and then we go at maximum power and come back down. And uh, so that's 80% modulation up and down. 
And uh, if we sort of zoom in on this, I think you can see that there's kind of some stair-stepped artifacts. Let me just capture one of these. Um, it, it's stair-steppy, and that's because that's the way that the Tiny SA does its modulation. It has a very coarse uh, uh, D to A converter. Um, I don't know if it's eight bits or less than that. It might be, might be four bit. I think it might be four bits. Um, and uh, so you can see the individual steps as it's generating this simulated waveform. Uh, and so there we go. We're using, you know, ancient technology <laughs> to to monitor the output of the, the machine. Now, what did we learn? Well, we learned that it is turning on and off. We saw the signal, so we know that our source is turning on and off. We can use it to validate that we're actually uh, modulating. We can look at the modulation. Um, what we really can't do is any absolute numbers. It's pretty hard to use these to say, ah, you actually have minus 20 dBm. Now there are charts and stuff, and you can probably get to within maybe five, ten percent of the power, um, but it really wasn't meant for that. It was meant for a relative measurement to make sure things are are, are working correctly, um, and they were used all the time. So talk to the old timers; they would tell you they use these constantly. Turn this back on. And yeah, they can still be useful, right? There you go.